Good evening everybody, massive, massive apologies for the slight delay in this, I mean obviously if you watch this on YouTube it wouldn't matter, but uh, we are here for round number 8 of the ATA GP2 Championships. Yes, it is round 8 of the championship and we are here for Baku, so in real life the 2016 Grand Prix is kind of boring in my opinion, 2017 though however produced the best race of the decade in my opinion I cannot guarantee a the best race online ever but what I can guarantee is a slight drama of possibility or at least I hope so uh, good evening my name is uh, AT Mr Michaels I'm in the comment box by myself today I've been slightly stressed because Twitch logged me out for whatever reason it never does but now it does so um but I'm here I'm just on the end of Q1 where we'll lose the slowest five drivers of the session currently that is in fact Desert Eagle so Desert Eagle in second place in the championship is already out and starting 19th uh, we've also got a few other drivers in there late unfortunately my house driver is currently 16th we're currently looking at the debut time mental one in the Williams he's currently on a 47.2 should be uh, set to improve that, but I don't think it's going to be enough to send him through. In fact, he doesn't improve on his time, so he sets 47.9. So he will start 18th in this full lobby Grand Prix. Yes, should be uh, should be quite interesting indeed. Um, we'll go through a few other things as we go into Q2, as we had a slight delay in the stream. I'm going to send a message out now. Yeah, um, yes, interesting stuff as we go through into Q2, so losing out was late in the uh, house. As Gary Wilburn actually got a 5 second grip penalty from that session, I'm sure we'll be able to clear that up, but there we go, there's the drivers that are unfortunately not with us again. So that is late in the house, TF1 limit in the Salba, and the mental one in the Williams. Also, a sleep I believe, did crash his car in the session. Let me just check that before we head on. Uh, yes, so a sleep seal on the Force India. And the McLaren of Desert Eagle, which I don't think joined back in, actually. So, yeah, that is the end of Q1. We're going to head straight into Q2. Where it did get, did get a little bit overcast from the start of the session to the end. So, might be looking at some rain in Q2. Yes, hope everyone is okay. I'm great today. Looking forward to a good race, hopefully. As we now head into Q2, where again, yet yeah, as I thought, we only have 14 drivers in this, in this one. So let's get on to what's this lap. Currently fitted. Lap time delta. There we go. So, um, yes, what to be said. Yes, we had a very interesting race in Canada last time out. Obviously, if you want to watch that race, that is on our YouTube channel now. Um, so, what it did mean is HLG in the Renault now leads the championship. Uh, Desert Eagle rejoins. He'll be signed from the very back of the grid, unfortunately. Yes, HLG took, has taken the championship lead away from Eagle. And it now has a 14-point lead. He's on 100 points with Eagle 86. Skyline is in third place after a DNF in Canada. He's on 75. Optical is, I guess, best of the rest on 51 points in the house. Anger Fist, the next row, Mansell on 28. And it's Mackie 27, Gary 25. And then Shadow in 17. Constructors Mercedes actually have quite a healthy lead going into today's race. They have a 21 point lead ahead of Renault. But Renault closing them down, so. Uh, could be quite interesting to see. So we have 14 drivers in here now. We have noticed where the message pops up. Okay, I'm trying to avoid reading messages because it does pause the stream. Quite a few drivers on on soft tires actually. Anger Fist, um, F1 Acer, Mackie, Gary, and Patronus on soft tires, which is quite interesting. 
Now you can see our championship leader HLG in the Renault team, owner of Renault in fact, as he comes up through the dreaded castle section, takes the very cautious, of course it's not on a lap, so um, so it would we'll be taking a very cautious indeed. IGD Skyline in the Mercedes is also about to begin a lap, so let's ride on board with him as they go across the, well, almost ever-ending straight down into turn one. You've got to get this braking zone perfectly right because the curb on the inside can throw and on the outside, but he hits that very nicely as we go down into turn two. This first part of the lap is all 90 degree, or mostly 90 degree corners as he uh, struggles with the back end of the traction coming out of that corner. As Asos retired, I think he's crashed it in there, but as we go down into turn three, another 90 degree left-hander. Again with the curves. The curves are a lot more uh, higher this time. Um, in Baku uh, from the last game. They can throw you as another 90 degree right hand that comes in through there. Now this is a really tricky section here, the chicane. Left and right, got to clip both the, both the uh, curves, but uh, Skyline avoided that. Now going into this very, very tricky double apex right hand, a very, very tight second gear. And now into the castle section, you got to try and hug the walls and the apex, clip both of them. Goes a little bit exit of that corner there, but doesn't cost him that much as he runs on the exit. And now, uh, full throttle down into the arguably the trickiest corner of the entire lap. Even trickier than the castle section. Because here it's blind on entry. Going to mine that curve because that can throw you into the wall on the right hand side. But he's done that very nicely. Uh, this is a key corner right here. You've got to get the exit perfectly right because you've got the long straight going down into turn one to end the lap. Uh, these two corners here, the left and the right, can be more tricky than what you think because um, especially when you're behind a car and especially in wet weather but then once you've done all that you've got a breather all the way down this straight and let's see what miles an hour he gets up to he gets a 211 12, 212 miles an hour before he hits the brakes is a 42.2 on the super softs a very uh, competitive time I think probably will be seeing anything in the 141s into Q3 for pole probably that's a solid lap from Skyline in the Mercedes that's set up very nicely. John came across in a 42.9. Uh, Key Legends is there. Uh, Craig Senna does a 42 flat. Uh, Key Legends, this is a new driver uh, going into the Red Bull as uh, HLG just beats Craig on a 42.008. Should have been 7, but missed a trick there. Yes, uh, Key Legends um, asked her to join the league a couple races ago. Unfortunately, he couldn't race in Canada due to family commitments, but he's here today, which is great to see. As a new driver, the league is ever expanding. As he comes up to the end of the straight, it's going to be a 43, possibly. It's a 43.5. Goes P5. Of course, we're looking for the top 10 in this session. So it'll be good to see what we can do. Gary Albo. Now, Gary does not like this track at all. He has crashed in two competitive league races out of four, apparently. So, and then the other two, he didn't really finish well. So he is key to try and get a good performance here. Currently goes eighth on the soft tyres on a 44-4. That will not be enough, I don't think. So he will go through into that. Anybody else on a lap? Mansell's on an out lap in the Ferrari as uh, BDRW is also in the Rebel. 41.8 from Ryan. There we go. We're in the 41s now. Um, so good luck from him. Of course, we've got to watch out for Angerfist. He is uh, one of the front runners or has shown some very good pace lately. So it'd be good to see him come out. He's currently on the soft tyres, so he might not see his best in this session. Yes, 41.8 from IGD Skyline. Very, very interesting. A uh, couple of absentees here today. Uh, Fast X part time. Unfortunately, you won't see him. Uh, no, I won't say it. But you will not see him here tonight, um, which is a shame. I hope he's uh, doing okay. Um, like, he's fine, but you know, um, I'd rather see him racing. But he's not here tonight, which um, is there. But he will be placed by the mental one, who, as you saw at the end of the first section, is qualifying 17th. Um, yeah, so. Everything else as Mansell begins his flying lap now. So, Skyline and HLG right at the top of the standings. I do think HLG 
has a lot more in him. Uh, Petronas will be one to watch as well. In the uh, practice sessions this week, which these guys have been heavily practicing as Mansell, whoa, very, very close to the wall on the outside. You've got to get that breaking very right into turn one. And that is something we may unfortunately see in the first lap. Is the uh, break center that was in the pits just checking. Yeah, you may see a few uh, interesting uh, pieces of drama in the first lap. Because it's a very short run, this is a very tight corner, followed by another tight corner. So we may see a few uh, first lap shenanigans, as I call it, as Mansell continues on his lap in the Ferrari. Two cars get out of his way, as they should. This is teammate, actually, of X Rob Petronas, who is currently in a sixth place on a 43 1. That was on the soft tyre, so he might be quite careful about that. We have 11 people watching the stream, so a good evening to you. I hope you are doing well. Of course, I do not have the chat open with me because uh, otherwise that will stop the stream down. Um, I will find a way to have the chat open. I will try it probably next week in uh, Austria. Let's see how that goes. Uh, Texo Mansell just finishing off his lap, one of the key corners. You've got to get that very right. He goes wide, completely sideways. There's more time in this lap. And Mansell, I think he was one of the front runners at the end of session one, or Q1, as he goes along the long straight up to 211 miles an hour, at least you should do, as he opens up the DRS. Now, Optical keeps on jumping in and out of the lobby, which I don't like seeing. Um, having problems with the connection improves Mansell, 43 free, but he needs to find a bit more time than that. As we still got some uh, fast drivers here. Boss man in the Toro Rosso car. And on the soft tyres, this is interesting. We're very wide through the castle section now. It's BDRW in the Rebel. He's actually finishing his lap now. And he sets a 44.6, which is not enough. Because uh, Gary is now in 10th place and on the bubble. We have just under 6 minutes to go. Let's see what Angervis does. Of course. From Canada, he is now in the Toro Rosso, full time in GP2, and he got a very creditable. What did he get? I believe he got third place actually in his first. It might have been fourth, third or fourth. I should know this, but I do not. But yeah, he's a. Uh, he does have some very decent pace. Might see him at the top by the end or, or near the top. Say top five towards the end of the season. Of course, he joined late, so he's got some time to catch up as Bossman actually pops himself into 10th place ahead of Gary on the soft tyres so he's got a lot more time but he's only just got ahead of a 10th as Angerfist is coming through now on the soft tyres this is a very good lap, it's a 42-1 so yeah it's very very good pace there on the soft tyres from Angerfist and he should be able to get in the 41s once he uh, puts on the faster tyre but that should see him through into the next one it's Gary in the Force India he comes around now. Of course, we had a interesting race in the F1 division. I did not have a good time at all. Qualified 30. We've got caught up as uh, Gary has actually touched the wall on the left-hand side. There is damage, actually. So Gary is still being haunted by this track. He's got damage. He's got, I'd say, enough time to get back in the pits and go out again to repair this. You've got to be careful. He's got to be careful though because he's got to get back in the pits and this, this damage around here is, you know, of course you've got the walls on either side so it's a track that you can go with damage but it depends how bad it is, just Gary <laughs> nearly turned in too early there for that, um, those two corners. As I said, those two corners on the straight there, they're a lot more difficult than you think. It's like Eau Rouge. Eau Rouge is a lot more dangerous, especially in this game now and people in their setups which have uh, realized that you know you need to have a swayy car swayy i don't even know if they think that's a word you know what i mean you know what i mean as uh key legends his first race in ata is coasting round to start his lap we're only in ninth he's only just in ninth actually and uh, a bus man there you can see a bit of a solid gap there i noticed the front four uh, up the front and there's quite a bit of a gap to Joran in fifth although Joran has done very well to get himself up in fifth there. Shadow Racer also in sixth place. 
Yeah, Shadow was one of the ones that surprised me in um, qualifying last time out in Canada. Didn't necessarily put it through with a, a result. He got eighth, which is points. He's currently on uh, 17 points so far, so he's picking up points here and there. But I mean, it's definitely getting a bit better for him in the Salva. Uh, apologies if you hear in the background the uh, commentator or the track tannoy or whatever that voice is in the background. It's very loud at this track and I've noticed it's exactly the same as the one in Silverstone if you uh, remember it. I don't know why it's exactly the same as Silverstone because this is nothing like Silverstone at all. Probably on the nowhere near but as Legends now comes through up to turn three. And set up for this track is really weird because obviously you've got that castle section and the uh, lots of corners by the end of the lap but this straight is so long and of course you've got that run from turn two to turn three because that is so long both of those are so long people are opting to go for very very low wings of course the danger of that is when you go through these corners here it's obviously you don't have the grip you don't have the turn in that you necessarily need so people are struggling to try and find out a uh, suitable setup for here. I went for low error as uh, Legends actually hit it at the castle section. I think his qualifying's over. That's way too much damage to carry on. And yet he's, oh, and his fact, oh, he's hit the wall. He's pushed too far. And he, in fact, he's been pushed down to 10th, who has jumped up a little bit. But key Legends, uh, on his first race, remember, he's, uh, well, I don't think he's going to go through into Q3, or even if he does, he won't be taking part, but it's his first race, so uh, first time nerves, I guess, but because Mads won his out lap. Skyline, interestingly, has gone out on another lap. Even though he's top, currently on a 41.8, um, he feels maybe with some more practice, I guess. Everyone else is in the pits. The top six are currently in the pits. Everyone else is currently out. Bossman is currently waiting, and in fact, in fact, yeah, Bossman is still in the pits, and he, well, that's it, really. He obviously tried to go through on this soft tyre, but I don't think that's going to be enough. As Mansell keeps on going through, Joran has retired, that's in the pits. Yeah, they're all retiring in the pits. We don't really want to look at Gary. Gary's actually, is he finishing a lap? No, he's starting one, starting one. Oh, very late on the brakes through turn one. You can see on the outside, outside curbing they do not want really to run the car wide because it goes sideways and again these are uh, sideways coming from turn two so not a good uh, opening to this lap it comes up now Patronus, Mansell, Mackie, Gary, and BDRW all on a lap but Gary for me, he, he, Gary has shown some pace Gary has shown some pace around this track it's just consistency and the walls are getting ever closer and he can't seem to keep going out a bit of a jump bit of a lag there but nothing too major as he goes through the chicane now onto this double right you can very very easily your lap time go too much over the curves but he's done that okay now this is the castle section he hit it last time does that just right but yeah carried a little bit too much acceleration through the final part goes wide it's decent but it's still scrappy He's got to beat a 43.5 uh, from Legends. And from Bossman, as a 43.6, who's still actually in ninth. Uh, Patronus has actually improved to a 41.9, I've just noticed. BDRW has not done. Gary has gone way too far into that corner there. That corner is crucial because he loses so much speed going down into the straight. I don't think this is going to be enough, but we'll carry on on this lap. Mackie's on one as well. Mackie actually pops up to seventh on a 43.1. He's through. Drops down to 8 because of Mantle. It's all down to Gary. What is this? It's a 42... 43 one. He's just done it. Well, not just done it, but by a few times he's done it. But he's in. He's into Q3 by the skin of his teeth. But there you go. Into 10th place. Knocked out our key legends in the Red Bull. Bossman in the Toro Rosso. BDRW in the Red Bull. And Ace and Williams. Ryan... But decided to uh, finish it off, so he finishes the session top on a 41.8. So that's very good from him. As we now go into Q3, Desert Eagle's connection is not having a good day today, which is surprising because it's normally quite good. Yeah. 
but there we go. The people knocked out in that is Key Legends and Rebel, Boss Man Torosso, BDR in the Rebel as well. So both Rebels 11th and 13th there. And F1 Acer in the Williams. So that's Felipe Massa because he left the session. I believe he should be coming back. But he, he'll be starting 14th. So there is the top 10. So we've got a Sauber. We've got uh, two Ferraris, two Mercedes, two Renaults, a McLaren, and a Torosso and a Force India. So Nice little selection there. Of course, the um, constructors in the overall championship, you know, the F1 and GP2 points combined, definitely still are very, very close going into this race. So it's good to see that at the front, there's a nice selection of cars. Is there going to be a change in conditions into Q3? Uh, doesn't look like it. Very, very overcast, actually. Very dark. Much more darker than it was in Q1 and 2, so we might get a bit going into this session. So everyone should be on the faster tyre. Let's go for the leader. Let's put the uh, telemetry and the lap data on. And let's see what we can get from this. So what can we see? I think this is Mackie's first appearance into Q3, if I remember rightly. As uh, both Renaults come out very simultaneously and then jump back, so interesting little spectacle there. Uh, yeah, I think Mackie, this is his first session into Q3. As already, we've got Salvo Shadow, who got through. A bit overexcited, I think, into turn two. There, you're not on a lap yet, mate. Uh, calmly go through. He's going to let the Renaults go through of HLG and Joran. Uh, what else? So, yes, Shadow also is. Uh, second time in a Q2 after Canada so as I said he's definitely getting his qualifying results underway of course we normally see the likes of Angerfist, Craig Senna um, Skyline and HLG of course the front runners Gary's also in up there, Mansell Patronus, Patronus obviously has only recently joined us Gary of course obviously only just scraped in but let's see now obviously both Ryan and HLG or Skyline and HLG will be saying to themselves, like, right, Desert Eagle's having his problems today. Unfortunate as they may be, we can get quite a bit of a gap over them. HLG, of course, championship leader going into tonight's race. Triple figures. He's slowing back down. Let the Salvo catch back up to him. So I don't know why he was uh, slowing down there. Or does he have a car in front of him? Might do, actually. Um, yes, it's Joran, so it was his own teammate he was trying to get some space from. Let's see as he keeps through the fast left and right there. Uh, should be able to see plenty of overtaking at this track. A bit better, I hope. Uh, but we shall see. You never know with online races, some of them can be absolutely crazy. Overtakes galore and you think to yourself, wow, that was a great race and others are just spread out and nothing really happens. Uh, we might have a possibility of survival of the fittest similar to Monaco as uh, HLG hits the curb on the second uh, there, but it's actually worked out for him. Because uh, the car went up in the air, but it landed perfectly for him. So he's a little bit lucky about that as he goes down into turn three. Slightly late on the brakes, but works, again, works for him. Maybe it's just his lines he wants to be taking. Um, third gear through there. I normally take that in second, that uh, corner he's just gone through, but um, there we go. Does avoid the curves, clips the uh, second part quite nicely actually. So he's hitting the mark so far. Still got plenty of the lap to go, all slightly deep into there. He goes through the castle section, all oh, very cautious actually. I'm expecting him to attack now. This is Q3. You're going to lay everything down on the track. Otherwise, pole position may not be yours. But, um... It goes through there. There's definitely some time for that castle section. Let's see how much time he can make through here. Very tricky corner. Got to look at the apex. Got to make sure he's done that perfectly. Absolutely perfectly as it goes down the hill. It goes through the last sector. There's a decent lap so far, but one's quite wide on the exit there. That will lose him some speed all the way down the straight. Now keeps going, oh, goes very close to the wall on the left-hand side. Let's see what lap this ends up being. It's like a 40-something, uh, but it's 
for Jaren. It's a 42-1 only from HRG. There's a lot more time there. Castle section particularly could have been a lot better. Better comes through, currently third. Where do we see now? Craig Senna does a 41-5. There we go. That's a that's a definite marker laid down from Craig there in the Mercedes. The 41-5. That is uh, really good from Craig now. Actually, I'll set it up to fastest lap. It's a bit better. We'll see at the end as uh, Gary goes into fourth. Like the flags is set to one. Where's that? And this is there. Might might have been shadow actually. As they all come through. Craig, right here we go. Ryan, who's on the end of their lap? Angus, no, Mackey, and the McLaren coming to the end of his lap. And said, good qualifying for Mackey into Q3, I believe for the first time this season in GP2. This is a decent lap actually as well. 43-4 goes ahead of Mansell, goes into P5. Slightly off the top four, but anything from here is a bonus. Patronus gets a 41-9. So nobody can touch Craig at the moment, but you still got Skyline and Angerfist here. And of course, HLG got, has got a bit more time underneath him, I think. There's going to be Mercedes, Ferrari, and then the two Venos, and a Force India in the top five. Well, we've still got these two, including this Mercedes of Skyline. Obviously did not finish in uh, Canada. It was just in the wrong place in the wrong time. But he's desperate now to get some points this week. He slowed down actually. Where did he? I don't know why he slowed down. Did he run out of fuel or? Hmm, I'm not sure about that. So he's abandoned his lap. Hmm, interesting. And Angerfist is currently coasting round. Uh, HLG has actually improved to a 41.6, but it's not enough to take pole off Craig. So Craig, Craig has hit that lap almost out of nowhere. Really, he hasn't really shown the pace over this week. Um, in fact, actually, HLG and Ryan are claiming 41 twos. But it's, that's probably one of those laps where you hit it once and you think, yes, yes, that's start time, but you can never hit it again. But 41 6 for HLG, that is a good time from him, but we're still looking at Angerfist in the Toro Rosso. That is definitely the person for me to look at in the Toro Rosso. Well, he said a 42-1 on soft tyres, so definitely he can be mid to low 41s if he can nail the lap correctly. I should have been, I should have been on HLD second lap because I knew there was more time there, and I was right. He went on front row so far. I believe it was HLG that took pole position last time out, so we'll be looking for back to back there. Perfect turn one for Mangafist. Perfect turn three, click the curb, but maybe a little bit too much as he goes through there. Currently, you got Joran in the tour, in the Renault. Currently, put P4 Mackie in sixth on the McLaren. Out of an eighth, uh, Ryan yet to set a time, so still got plenty of time left. Just got four minutes to go as we ride on board now with Angerfist. Is a nice looking car that Toro Rosso. I do hope they do something for their 2018 car. Of course, they reveal theirs on the day of pre-season testing, which is on the 26th of March, which I believe is Monday, actually. And you watch it. Took it in first gear, that corner there, which is a different little tactic. And second gear through... Oh, that is a... Wow, he is really... Um, that is the most sideways and uncontrolled way of taking... The, that was a lot of gear changes. Got down the first gear a couple of times. But if it works for him, then it's fine. Whoa! Went right over the curbs there, but actually worked out for him. Sometimes, though, if you hit that curb, even if it's an inch too far to left and right, then that can throw you into the wall. But this lap does look very, very good. Although it's that castle section. Was that fast? It definitely looked frantic, but was it fast as it goes down into the first corner now past the straight? This does look very good, actually. It's a 40... It's a 40... 1.6. He's just got ahead of HLG by three thousandths, but not enough to take off Craig. 
So Craig Senna throwing in pole position. Look how close that is. A tenth cover. <coughs> Sorry. A tenth covering all three. Brilliant stuff. He got HLG on an outlap. Ready. Go with his right. Ryan is currently on his lap as well. He's yet to set a time. A little bit of pressure. I think on Ryan. He's got. Actually, he's got enough fuel to do two laps. So. Whatever he does in this first one, he's got time to do a second. So Angry Fist got... It's only just snuck ahead of HLG, but... Second place? I thought he would be in a 41-2 or something, but... Maybe that castle section... Maybe he did make a few mistakes there. It's definitely a lot ragged, not as controlled as you may want it to be. Back from the Mercedes up to around just under 200 miles an hour in turn three. Not as long as the star finish straight, but definitely long enough for some overtakes. It goes quite deep into turn four, I believe that must be. Yes, must be turn four. Into the chicane there, that curb, and again, throw the Mercedes sideways. I do think this second lap from Ryan may be a little bit better, but we'll carry on with this. That's the apex quite nicely. The castle section now going to be very, very careful. Oh, through the car into there. It goes again, goes wide in the last bit. Carry the speed through, but if you carry, <laughs> kind of silly, but if you carry too much speed in the first part of the castle section, then you go wider that third part, right at the top of the hill. And obviously, you go wide and lose time. Currently, it's Craig, Angerfist, HLG, and Patronus, the top four at the moment. Can Ryan get onto the front row with Craig? I don't think this lap is going to do that, but it might. He comes up to the final line now. It actually looks quite impressive, this lap. Might be challenging the front. It's a 41... 41.8. P4 just ahead of Patronus. He's two tenths. And again, he's got enough fuel to do that lap again. HG goes wide in the chicane, but does that line work for him? It might do. Angerfist is in the pits. His run is done. So, here we go. Who can challenge him? Who's going to be the next one to challenge him? I do think it's any of the top five, I'd say. In the 41s, Angerfist is... Work is done, I guess. He starts on the soft tyres, remember. So, the higher he starts, the more better position he's going to be in. Where's Patronus? It's going to be HLG first to set the time. The time is over. This is their last run and HLG goes very wide on the corner but works for him because the car didn't go sideways. He was just inch perfect to the wall but now he goes misses the apex and you can see he maybe actually has too much fuel because he's gone 2.8 laps of fuel and he doesn't have enough time. One man again. Jordan Proust for 42-0. Good effort from him. Let's see what HLG can do. He's all he has to do is find a tenth, and he's going to be on pole position. Is this going to be it? It's a 41-4. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. He takes it away from Craig, but Craig is now coming up to the line. And is this going any quicker? Ankerfist has now dropped down to third place. But can Craig snatch back his pole position? This lap looks really good. Is it going to be enough? It is a... No, it's not. No, it isn't. And Ryan is... No, his lap is... He's made a mistake. And in fact, I think he has damage as well. Yes, he does. So his run is over as well. Gary's coming into the pits. Mansell is ghosting back. He's run out of fuel. Mackie is the last one. And then McLaren to try and haul his car up. He's on a 43-4 currently, which is going to be much better than that. But where is it going to put him? It is a... And he doesn't improve. It's 43-5. But there you go. HLG takes pole position away from Craig. Craig got that time in very early. And look to me... Well, look maybe to have pole position. But HLG gets it in his last lap. Just. Literally just. Well... A bit, bit more of a gap than it was there, so Craig actually crashes in the castle section, maybe showing his anger out, but uh, there he goes, he goes, ghost in shadow, I guess.
Rengifis in the Toro Rosso and Ryan on the Mercedes. Then it's Patronus in the Ferrari and Jorin in the Renault. Force India of Gary will be seventh alongside the Salba of Shadow in eighth place. And then you got the Ferrari of Mansell and Mackie will round up the top ten. So less than a second, less than nine tenths actually, covering the top eight. So very, very close times. But uh, HRG once again on pole position. That's his second pole position in a row after Canada. So uh, good stuff from him. Uh, very, very nice indeed. But Craig will be relatively happy with that. I think Anger Fitz will be as well. Remember, he starts on the soft tyres. And of course, if we have mixed conditions in the race, which again, I do not know, as always, very interesting. Remember, Gary has that five place grid penalty, so he'll be starting a bit lower as well. But there we go, there is your top 10. HRG, back to back pole positions from his race in Canada. Remember, he won that from start to finish. Can he do a repeat performance? Be interesting to see. But he's definitely going to have the drivers like Craig Senna, Angerfist, Skyline Patronus there, all vying them down. How many drivers are we going to have finishing? That's going to be the next question. Yes, we're back up to double figures in the viewers. 11 once again. Um, as I said, I will try having the stream up on my phone for Austria to see how that goes next Friday. But for now, let's get ourselves ready for tonight's race. Got to press A on that. And it is completely dry conditions for tonight's race. 26 laps around the Baku circuit. So let us take through. Let's see the ones that were outside the top 10, actually. As there's a bit of a change there, because we, probably because Gary had that five place grid penalty. But there you can see Desert Eagle starting from 19th place on the grid. Can he avoid the lap, lap one shenanigans? That will be very interesting to see. Deciding not to go on separate tyres, which is interesting. In fact, none of them are. But that's good. The mental one, obviously, on his debut on 18th, tier 1 limit, returning. He starts 17th, lates in the half, in 16th. Uh, Sleep Seal. Optical G actually should be in the half, so he's not in the half, he's in the Williams. I don't think a Afonisa actually didn't uh, rejoin us, so that's why. And the only one at the moment on soft tyres is Angerfist, which is interesting, but good. And of course, Gary, obviously, that 5 place grid penalty drops down to 12, which moves everyone up. One, which means Shadow actually starts in seventh in the Salba. Very good qualifying for him lately. Of course, you've got Boss Mantor also in eleventh, BDRW in the Rebel in thirteenth. So there's there's the ones outside the top ten. I think Desert Eagle will be the one to watch. Of course, you know he's quick. He's at the front of the field. But I always say, a uh, championship and online, it's not what you do when races are good. It's what you do when races are bad. Like if you qualify outside the top 10 or you get hit off into the turn into first lap, you have to change your damage because those things happen. It's what you can actually get back from that, which makes you, which makes your championship a bit more deserved than say if you just won off at the front all the time. So if Desert Eagle is going to be up at the front in this championship and all said and done, this is the race. I think if he can come through and get some points, you know, decent points, top five, then that'll be good. Then it'll be very much deserved. As TF1 limit does actually ready up, but I think there was enough time now. And BDLW's left. Oh no. Oh, his connection again is letting him down. Uh he said he had it sorted, I think. I don't think it is. That is a shame to see from him. But let's hope we can have a very clean first lap into there. It's gonna be narrow going on down into turn one. Breaks are gonna be a thing. As we're going to get ourselves ready for round eight of the championship. Here we go. Uh, we've got lights out for the Baku Grand Prix, the European Grand Prix. It's all set, ready to go. And lights out, away we go. Lights out, a jump start. Um, might have been a lag start because uh, HLG has got a massive gap from the two Mercedes through. Is it going to be clean for turn one? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. A 4-5 four, five, four, five wide in the midfield. What is going on there? It's going down into turn three. It's got all claustrophobic there, but a little bit of taps there, but got through just about. This damage for TF1 limit, who started at the back, is up to seventh. 
amazing start, but there we go. So let's have the tyres, please. Thank you very much. And oh, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six girls through there. But BDRW's in the pit. See, unfortunately, one didn't join back in time, I don't think. That is such a shame from him. Mackie's dropped down to 18th, so he's not a good start. He got caught up in that. There's a long, long race to go. No, no idea what's going to happen. HLG, HLG there is still leading. Jordan's in sixth. Yellow flags through sector one as they go through the castle section. Angerfist has dropped to fifth for the start. So Retronis has had a good start up to third. A HLG flag start and it has to sort out the, the game. I was going to say a rude word, but I hold back from there. But that lag start definitely um, helped HLG because he's already got a two second lead over Skyliners in second. It feels good. The Eagles. Pass actually been to ninth place, so he swapped cars for now. Remember, from 19th on the grid, he's up to ninth already. That's a ridiculous start, absolutely ridiculous. The sleep's still on the back end of the top. Yellow flags all over the place, and oh, left. Oh, limit is out. He has crushed it in the fast left and right. He's gone. Craig Center's in the pits. He's had damage. And look, whoa, free wide through there. Eagle, the sleep seal, and oh, the. They're connecting, or they're not, or they can't really see each other. Red Bull goes on into turn one, that's key legends. And then stuff is happening. I don't think I, I, I yes. <laughs> yeah, stuff. There we go. Again, please. And again, many people in the pits, actually. Everyone outside the top 10 has actually gone into the pits. Lates has got damaged. Bossman has changed. Their mental ones in there. Gary Mansell on to medium tires they got damage as well not great to see let's get back up the front you got sky hlg leading his gap has gone down to 1.7 seconds to skyline is in second long long race ago so you have no idea but the, everyone outside the top 10 clearly involved in the lap one shenanigans through there craig as well he looked very very strong at the front i don't know what happened there with him, but I'm sure we'll get to find out. Desert Eagle is right up at the back of the Sleep Seal, going down into the uh, downhill left hand of a Sleep Seal, coming up the inside. There, oh, it's got to be very close. Desert Eagle's had a fantastic start, but any damage here is going to get it, be all wasted. And he's right behind the Sleep Seal. Sleep Seal's actually had a fantastic start himself, up into sixth place now. Check position changes in a bit, and there's yellow flags again. Track is. I did think track was going to be um, difficult as uh, Joren is a couple of tenths behind Patronus. I just quickly check back to their eagle. Has actually dropped behind the sleep seal a little bit. Uh, Gary's left. Gary hasn't had a good time. Go into turn one there. Optical G. Now this is conf slightly confusing because um, obviously Optical and Eagle have had horrible connection troubles going into the going through qualifying and it's put them in wrong cars because Eagle should be in a McLaren and Optical should be in a Haas so that's happened so slightly different scenarios for these two but still they've got to race on and still get the points the sleep still let's have a look at the uh, uh, where is it uh, interval position change there you go up 12 places ridiculous it's only on lap three eagles up to 12 places a sleep seals up nine uh craig center the biggest loser i'm afraid down nine places from his grid spot already made a pit stop in fact he's the uh leading person on those stops late and mental one already in the pits again no not good stuff as an eagle has actually let optical go through okay so i don't know why that would be as John is looking up the back of Patronus. John, this is absolutely fantastic from him. He's coming down 10 points so far going into this race. And look, he's got amazing pace by Patronus, who is slightly sideways with that fast left and right. That's often lost him a lot of, a lot of uh, speed going down here. But he's obviously running a low aero Patronus because John cannot catch him up on the straight there. He's got a much better run as uh, the mental one on his debut has crashed I believe yes he has where has he done that that is turn uh, turn two 
Yes, that is turn two. So Mental One is out. Lates is in a stuck, I think. That might not be right, I don't believe, but oh, Shadow and Key Legends are in the pits as well. Shadow's got damage, as to Key Legends, what's happened there? And he sped in the pit lane. Oh, this is... Uh, a few drivers not very happy with this track, not at all. That does move Craig back into the points, only a ninth though. See if he can recover something from this race. And you can see Patronus is slightly struggling to keep up with the top two. 2.8 seconds now behind HLG and Skyline. Well, Skyline is, uh, the gap's now back up to 2.2. So HLG's, I guess, controlling this gap at the front. That's Patronus slightly close to the wall. Yeah, uh, that gap between these two and the top two are kind of forming away. Anger face. And the problem for Angerfist is he's on the soft tire, a little bit of lag jumping about. Not brilliant. As Lates is out of the pits, he was stuck in the pits for a very, very long time. I don't know why that would be. Um, Obstacle, as I said, was let through from Desert Eagle, so I don't know why he did that. Anyway, see if Angerfist can close down to Jura. As Jura has actually got slipstream on Patronus. Sorry, message, guys. Oh, was, oh, I missed that. Oh, why? Why did I miss that? Angerfist, I think, has done an absolutely beautiful move. In fact, I missed it because of the message. Need to stop opening messages, but Angerfist is into fourth place. On the soft tire, remember, as you can clearly see. But uh, he's up there in now, to, back up in the fourth place. There's yellow flags all over the place. This races and this track is causing problems. They really cause that many problems in the F1 race last night. As Patronus was very close to the wall. He hit the curb so heavily it threw him to the left hand side and that's what the curbs do these days now as um Mental One on his debut has not finished off well. And the flash through sector three as well as we've got these three drivers now. Patronus, Angerfist and Joran. As they go through the castle section, lovely camera shot. Through there. Bit lane has caused some troubles as well over the uh, two races. The speeding of the pit lane. But you can see the gaps are starting to form between the top two. And then you've got a three second gap to these three battling for the last spot. The and then you've got a seven second gap to a sleep seal, optical and desert eagle. So there's, there's, there's those three, right from the end of the points, and then you've got a further 18 seconds to Craig Senna in ninth place. But of course, we've only on lap five. Long way to go. As uh, Angerfist is jumping a little bit, the lobby's not brilliant, I must say that. The lobby's not perfect. As to go down into turn one, and Angerfist, oh, so close, he's actually got damage. He's hit the back of Patronus, just under braking. Whether that was lag incorporated or not, he's tapped the back and you can see he's got damage on the left hand side. That is not going to help him at all. And this is the problem when you have the pace and you put on the harder tyres at the start of the race. The likelihood of you being caught up in incidences or just things that shouldn't happen to your race are, you know, higher. So it's, it's a very high risk and uh, of course he's was at the front, he's shown pace to be at the front, but he decided to go on harder tyres to get to maybe the advantage. And you can work it if you stay out of trouble. Unfortunately, he's behind Patronus and uh, he's got damage which is going to hamper him, but he's still right behind as they go through there. They're now three and a half seconds. And, uh, Skyline is actually caught right back up to uh, HLG. Has HLG made a mistake? Does he have damage? Uh, I don't think he does. He's just. Skyline has caught up that gap massively. It was uh, up to around 2.2, it's now under a second. So I've got to keep an eye on the gap here. As Optical is on the back of a sleep seal, is actually catching up to Joran. That gap's gone down, so well, the gaps will go up and down when people make mistakes. This, this track is very much a mistake uh, track, basically, as Ryan is very close to the wall. But that's what you've got to do if you're in a slipstream, he's going to get DRS. But he's nowhere near close enough, I don't think. The straight line speed going up and up and up. 
to 208 miles an hour. Maybe he's added some aero to the front of his car, which you can do from qualifying in the race. You can do that in real life. So he's up there because the straight line speed is a lot more slower than it was. Maybe he's making an adjustment, and that is what is giving him the confidence to challenge HLG here. Very interesting indeed between the two as they come into turn three. HLG very wide. I'm sure he doesn't have damage, but it looks like he is. He's very struggling the understeer of this car. We are coming into the end of the offs there. We need to jump out to Optical G, who's right behind a Sleep Seal in this freeway battle here for sixth place. As I said, Eagles had a great start, but he hit this roadblock of uh, the Force India, who's very much in this right, he's defending this position. Eagle can't seem to get any higher than this. As, uh, oh, Shadow has been disqualified, parked in a dangerous location. Where is he? Why would he been doing that? Oh, he's, uh, he's lost it, and obviously he's tried to reverse back, but he's just been disqualified for staying there too long. That's... That's a very weird one from Shadow. Don't know why that was there. Mansell's left the session as well. The, uh, the lobby is uh, servers so once again playing us up again. Acura has never been a quiet race. It's always been a, and Angus has got a much better drive out of the final section there. Remember, he has damage, but he still has a straight line speed on Patronus. Is Patronus actually pitting? He seems like he is. No, he decides not to. Backs out of it. Maybe he was trying to fool Angle Fist into trying to pit. Anyway, to go down to turn one. Very slight on the brakes again. Angle Fist. Well, you can see a podium in front of him, but he seems to be slipping away and he can't get past Patronus. In fact, he doesn't really need to because he has the advantage of going on the faster tyre late. But uh, still looking for a way through. Uh, Joan has dropped back a little bit. 1.3 seconds as Angafist very close in turn three there. That turn three can catch you out so easily. And again, he's pushing really, really hard. Obviously, that damage is not helping him at all. Yellow flowers is popping up all over the place every single time. They can still see the front two in front of them. Ryan is, uh, the gap's gone up back up to 1.7 seconds. So, Ryan. Put in the pressure on, but HLG has just turned up the gear. I think he must have made a mistake because he's uh, pushing that gap back up. Going once again as a... Uh, whoa, it does a wheelie. What? I don't know whether that actually happened on his screen, but he does have damage. So maybe that did actually happen. I've never seen that before. I've seen it in um, Belgium. The Curb and Poo one can actually uh, wheelie your car. But I've never seen it there, Baku. That's damaged him, so it's going to hamper him as well. Optical again cannot seem to find a way past the Sleep Seal. And uh, uh, Desert Eagle has dropped back a little bit. Uh, Craig is uh, still currently in night. Bossman is holding down the last point in 10th. I believe we still have 13 drivers running. We're on lap 9. A bit of a long Grand Prix still left to go. Optical has the DOS but not close enough. The Steve Seal. Joan's in the pits. Joan moves up a little bit. This is now the battle for fifth. So Joan, what's he gonna go on to? I presume the medium tires. Or well, maybe it's the soft tires. Maybe he's trying the softs to the end. He's got damage, remember, so he's gonna put on the soft tires. I did see medium. Hey! Just go. Yeah, camera, just go through the front wing. Perfect. As Optical is now right up behind the Sleep Seal. So Joan on to medium ties. Even though it said soft on this car, but never mind. Visual glitch once again. But so Joan on the mediums, that should be him safely to the end. But can he uh, challenge again for the podium? Obviously that damage is gonna ham hem hamper him. I think another word. Hinder and hamper, and I ended up not saying either. Optical call again. A sleep seal, I think, is doing very, very well here. Defending this position against Optical. Of course, the sleep seal has only got... Well, he's got no points, the sleep seal, actually. So he's vying for his first points of the season. So he's defending it like his life depends on it. 
and well he has every right to so he keeps on going uh, does he as I said drop back a little bit now it's up to two seconds behind these two so the battle splitting up and in fact anger fist as well that damage is now hurting him a lot he's dropped back from Patronus quite a bit maybe Patronus is jumping in front of him but optical yet again using that well I say Mercedes engine all cars are equal there's a car in front of them is that would that be looks like a Toro Rosso might be boss no it's anger fist anger fist whoa he's had massive damage he's had more that's more damage than what he has so maybe he made a mistake that's the reason why he dropped back so anger fist is in the pits where is he going to come out in relation to John of course he's got the front wing damage as well goes on to mediums here yeah, he has to so that's soft tire damage soft tire um soft tire um, advantage that he had is now completely slipped away and this is going to be close between him and Joran let's have a look there he is so Joran managed to stay ahead of Angerfist there so in terms of the final step of the podium Patronus looks to be in the hot seat for that if he keeps his car intact because he's in third he hasn't had damage there and there is the uh, the car of late so this battle is now up to fourth place so decent stuff but obviously these guys yet to pit in terms of the people that made a stop Craig Senna in fact is the first person who has made a stop he stopped very very early of course onto soft tyres whether those soft tyres get to the end is well is a good question I know mediums can I know mediums just can so I think perhaps Craig may have to pit again damage uh, dropped off from his maybe that's just debris I don't know the optical is actually dropping a little bit further back now in fact he's actually dropped very um, possible desinkage going on because he's not going as fast as he should be but was that definitely a mistake Eagles in close there's a lot of people in the pits and in fact yes Eagles uh yeah, we've had a desync issue, I think, with Optical. Because Optical would not do that. And yeah, he's got a cross in front of his name. So whether that is... Yeah, he's left the session. Optical, that is such a shame from him. A lot of people in the pits. In fact, HMG and Skyline went into the pits for soft tyres. I did Patronus. And in fact, Patronus has got up behind Craig. So Craig's up to six. Patronus has pitted and is way not that not that far ahead of um, John in fact you can see him so not bad indeed so a sleep seal now leads the race having yet pit, having yet to pit but Angerfist is now going to be looking up the back of um, Joran and his car is actually revving a lot which is not normal yeah so HLG unfortunate I mean Optical G is uh disconnected from the lobby he's had trouble all night right, it's a shame so a sleep seal now leaves the race having yet to pit he's taken a those super softs a long time I must say where is he gonna come out in this uh in this jigsaw of course you've got um Desert Eagle as well yet to pit he's into second as Optical now drops down through the field back end of the points Angerfist is now ninth place behind Joran Petronas and Craven of course you've got Sleep Seal and Eagle to pit and a Sleep Seal does go into the pit so there's a late entry actually should be doing it probably does Desert Eagle pit yes he does they both do and I think Eagle does have a bit of damage they both slow down yes they do just in time so let's take stock let's have those two a sleep seal and desert eagle into the pits sleep seal goes on to soft tires doing quite well actually sleep seal still in fourth he's going to drop down quite a bit um desert eagle there articles in the pits desert eagle actually is in the pits for a long long time comes out in eighth place all the uh, pieces of the jigsaw are now falling into place. The Sleep and Seal has actually come out right behind this battle here. But now fifth place. So Anger Fist has... Yes, Anger Fist has actually got past Joran. I missed that. 
And this is now the battle fifth place. So, take stock. HLG is now the gap from HLG to Skyline has jumped up to five seconds. So somewhere Ryan has maybe made a mistake in the pit stop somewhere. But then to still lead this race with Craig Senna. Nice decent recovery drive, but whether he needs to pit again is a good question. He's back up to third. Petronas is fourth. With Angerfist in fifth. On the medium tyres and Joran. So Angerfist and Joran the only ones on mediums. The rest on softs. Mantle's on uh, mediums as well. But Mac is on super softs. Lost man in 12, so that's the battle for the back end of the points. The Sleep Seal. Now, Sleep Seal's very much impressed me this race. Very much so. As I said, no points coming into this race. And he's right up there. Solid, solid pace. I mean, um, Eagle, Eagle and if Optical G were still here, may have profited from the jumpy start, I guess. Uh, Sleep Seal. Of course, up eight places from his... Uh, Start line position is right behind a Joran. He's actually got so much straight line speed. Joran, what is that arrow on him? But the DRS is going to really help the Sleep Seal. He's looking to the outside though. Uh, can he get a move on on the outside? No. Joran keeps on the inside. Obviously, Joran is very much experienced in the league now. It's in his third season. So he knows how to defend. The gap at the front has gone up to six seconds. Ryan is not happy on these tyres. And in fact, Craig Senna's closing in. Battle may be coming there. Again, DRS was available for a sleep seal. We decided not to use it. The closest in once again on Joe. And Angerfist has uh, gapped them a little bit and is trying to catch up to Patronus. But that'll be very difficult considering he's on the harder tyre of Patronus. I think Angerfist, if he ends up fifth, will be quite disappointed with that result if it ends like this. Because he definitely was up at the front. Sleep Seal's right behind Joran now. HLG looks very, very comfortable at the front. The gap is just extending as every time I look at it. Maybe Ryan's struggling a little bit. Do Ryan have damage? Let me just check. No, it just seems to be struggling for pace. And then you can see Craig there. Now, as Optical has joined back to goal, so you can still get some of Mantle's closing in very, very quickly. So... I don't think there's going to be team orders here between Craig and uh, hate Craig and uh, Skyline. Because Craig has obviously been on those tyres from the beginning as HLG sets the fastest lap of the race at 44.9. Let me just check that. Jesus. Uh, that, yeah, that is uh, fastest out by quite a way. So, uh, interesting stuff. Let's go back to a sleep seal who's again on the DRS again. That goes to the outside. John defends heavily on the inside. Uh, sleep seal much more late on the brakes. Oh, comes from perfect move. Beautiful stuff. I thought I thought there may have been contact, but as you can see, there's absolutely no contact at all. Very, very nice. Of course, he maybe practiced that move a lap ago. Um, maybe practiced that move a lap ago. Uh, but Joan was wise enough to it. But sleep seal this time, and there was a bit of damage there, a bit of contact from Joan. Joan got caught out from the sleep seal's braking there. Um, so, that's a shame for Joran. Got an angle for points, but that's not going to help him. A sleep seal through into turn one. Perfectly clean move. Good stuff. Very brave as well. But here's Craig. He's actually got within a second of Ryan. Ryan is very much struggling. He definitely doesn't have damage, but doesn't seem to be... I don't know whether he's pushing or, or something. It's definitely not... Look, he's very, very slow. Through the downhill left-hander, and HLG has flown off into the distance, up over seven seconds. But, I mean, Craig looks the slightly more comfortable, but obviously he's been on tyres that are 13 laps old. And can he get those to the end? I don't think he can. He would struggle towards the end of this race. If he was on medium, then maybe he'd be a bit more comfortable. Have a look. The gaps are spreading out now a little bit. Sleep Seal's got past Joran and John with that damage now. It's just dropping back a little bit. Uh, got seven seconds between Craig and third and Matronis in fourth. Oh, Craig, very late on the brakes for turn two. The Matronis, a very solid result 
at the present being in fourth place. Um, he had his first race in Canada last time out, got a tenth place. So this is obviously kind of a lot better than last time. Uh, but he's currently in solid fourth place, very good. Slightly caught by Angerfist, but Angerfist is getting a tenth, it is not sort of closing the gap as much. The Sleep Seals a further two seconds back, can see Angerfist in front of him. He's got a target, Let's see if he can chase that down. Right, way to go. A Mansell's into the pits, and he sped it in there. That pit lane is proving really difficult. Really difficult for everyone. And Mansell drops down to 10th. He's in a battle with Bossman, I think, for the last point. And in fact, Bossman's going to take that. Should do. Yes, he does. His Bossman is into the point, but Mansell will be right there. And Mackey is down in 12th there. And Legends is... King Legends is slowly going round, just letting Desert Eagle go through, it should be. Just about, it was on the racing line though, so careful with that. So, how many laps we got? We got 10 laps to go. Unfortunately, the gaps have spread out a little bit. As I said right at the beginning, this is one of those tracks where, you know, people can make mistakes, and if they do, then the gaps just uh, spread out too far. It's more of a it's a tight track, isn't it? I mean, that lap one, it's a narrow, very, very narrow turns. You were going to get contact, but I mean, you got it with professional racing drivers in 2017. So, you know, with Bottas hitting the curb at turn three, that very curb, and hit it to Raikkonen, which just caused, was the start of the, just the crazy race that was. But yes, let's get back up to the front. We've got HLG in the Renault, just seems cool, calm, and collected. He's the man in form going into this race in Canada. Pole position, race win, fastest lap, and he even got driver of the day as well. Hasn't been as comfortable. Ryan has pressured him, but it seems on these soft tyres, HLG does have the edge on Skyland at the moment. And Skyland has always said he doesn't particularly like this track. Um, was, I mean, their, their PBs, they were saying about their personal best times was close to one another so you could have seen a close battle between them two but it seems on the harder tyre um, HLG has the edge has that extra gear he can go to and doesn't seem to but still 10 laps to go and if obviously HLG crashes it, we've seen it this season with um, a BF1 racer as uh, Craig's actually got damage I think, yes he does so Craig does have to pit anyway. Well, we never know the answer. Could those soft tyres get to the end? But he's into the pits now. Yes, he does. I think he'll put on a pair of super soft tyres. Towards the end of the race. Uh, the other flag is set to three. Where is that? I don't think that is anything, actually. Rangafis is up to four. Sleeps here. Where is Craig going to come out. He'll come out in 8th. Yeah, he's going to be very solidly in 8th place, but he's got some hefty work to do to get up any higher because he's going to be, well, at least 7 corners behind Desi Eagle. There he is. Coming out there. 8th place, he's not going to be happy at all, especially when well, he was up. Was he a pole sitter? No, he was in on the front row. And he's seen that disappear into sixth place. He'll bounce back from it. He'll bounce back. I mean, as I said, Baku is this kind of track. It's close. It's close proximity between everyone. So, he'll be back. Definitely be back for next week, which we will be going to Austria. A very, very small track, because you'll see lap times probably in the 107s, 106s, if my uh, timings are correct. Uh, but yes, a much more open track. Uh, definitely uh, rooms for overtaking uh, the curbs again can throw you off so we might see a few of that but I'm definitely looking forward to that this week now can sleep still you can still see anger fist in front of them I think really that is really the closest battle or the battle that could be or actually no because you've got boss man who is currently back into the point so he's in the points now and uh, 
didn't see Mansell in front of him. Actually, I think Mansell did get past Bossman. Bossman must have made mistakes. In fact, yes. Damage once again. It's the, it's the debris Grand Prix. The debris Grand Prix. Because there's loads of front wings all over the place. Like 2017. There, there's another bit. The, oh, littering. Oh, and Bossman's gone. Breaks. Pirelli sign. Race over. Which means if Mackie ends up finishing where he is, you can get the point. But then again, Mackie at the end of the wall as well. So, oh, boss man. There he goes. Out the race. No points for him. He's only currently on four going into this race. So, he all needs, still needs the time. A sleep seal is actually, meantime, has caught the gap within a second. Anger fits. You can see he was going sideways as we joined on board. So a sleep seal is looking at fourth place. They go through the castle and they're going to go past the. Well, it's been cleared. Good job from the marshals or the virtual marshals, I guess. <coughs> Get that tour also out of the way. No safety car, unfortunately, as well, which would help situations like this when the gaps are spread out. But that's just the way the game is made. You've got to get, got to go with what you're given. You need to go downhill. So a sleep seal, after pulling off that great move ahead of Joran who's been uh, slightly being caught by uh, Desert Eagle for 7th there. <coughs> Except for me, sorry. But can he move, can he pull off a similar move to Angerfist who seems to be struggling with the, uh, there. in fact he's got damage as well. So his Sleep Seal, is Angerfist going to go into the pits? I think he is. It looks like he is. So yeah, a Sleep Seal is into 4th place. Good stuff. So Angerfist it's going for bad to worse. Going for bad to worse for him. Joins back up to fifth. Eagle sixth. And in fact, I think, yeah, he's going to definitely drop behind Craig. So Craig is up to seventh again. And Angerfist. It's just a case of what might have been for him. Yet another wing change. Now, can Craig catch up to Eagle? He's got 9.6 seconds with seven laps to go. Doable especially on the much, much faster tyre. So, perhaps if it's possible, Gary, with a message. Uh, once again. Okay. Stuff. So that's that. So yeah, so Eagle's actually catching back up to Joran, so we do have a battle on our hands here or fifth place and so Eagle catching back up to Jeroen I want to think yeah he's struggling with damage again why do people keep on getting damage it's more damage than Monaco actually no scratch that because there was only one driver who didn't get damaged and that was Ryan so that's him <coughs> so um yeah this is going to be the battle now I think Eagle catching up who Joran and Craig can he catch up to Desert Eagle Fed? He's caught a whole second in that sector actually, so Craig could. He's got to keep that pace up though. Is he going to get DRS in the back of. He is. He is, yes. Eagle on the back of Joan and we have a very interesting move from Eagle he has he has impressed me Desert Eagle there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of problems for others that may have contributed to his a uh, I mean 13 position we've got Sleep Seal up there with 11 up there in fourth place but Desert Eagle oh that would uh, that was a dive I think not a dive it's a lunge it's an unnecessary lunge because you were never going to make a move there, and he's just cost him time. He can wait to the straight man. Maybe he's worried about Craig. Can't see Craig yet in the Mercedes, but he's definitely catching. Gap is now 7.6 seconds. So there, the top three seem to be nestled in place. Seem to be nestled. This is the battle on track. Desert Eagle behind Joe. Now, I said if Eagle could get fifth place out of this. That'll be a champion, a potentially championship-winning potential. If you can get up from 19th on the grid to fifth, 
then that will be a very, very good drive. As I said, it's winning the championship is getting something from the days that are bad. Not necessarily chucking in the towel when things aren't going your way, like, you know, retiring in the pits, but fighting back through, getting through the points. And this is what Eagle's been doing, and he's going to have the situation behind Joran, who's been struggling with straight line speed all day. And it's going to be a simple move, but they're close, they're banging wheels. Bing. The jump. Eagle straight line speed doesn't seem good. Joan is actually going to outbreak him into turn one. Oh. It was key, but no contract it seems. Oh, there's a bit of jumpy. A bit of jumpy dad there, but they're back in front. And I thought I thought Eagle had the move done, but Joan outbreaks him into turn one. And make the mood stick make the mood stick make the move stick but Johnny goes very wide in turn three can Eagle look on the outside just no nope, doing uh, you give me my go anger fist is back in the pits again yet more damage oh god things are not going well for him at all he was up at the front him with the top five chance is just ebbing away so Joran is defending fifth place Craig is line up to the back of them under six seconds so can Craig make this a freeway battle towards the end of the race got on to go G with no points today his car just ghosting through does it equal again he does see the of a joint is hanging on to that fifth place he can defend very well go down he's going very wide does Joran they're catching up to who is that that's late who uh, retired very early on in this race both fast drivers not scoring any points that's my team indeed as Joran did not have a good run through here Eagle is going to be all over him but can he get his way through oh he's again again Eagle he had to sort of line it out correctly and he had to ease off on Joran he's up on the inside now this should be a move done and much better camera there can he get, but well, John's better on the brakes. There's contact. Robin and Ties. Eagle is through. Good stuff, and Eagle. And John was looking up in the inside, but couldn't make a move back. And he's through. And there's the Mercedes of Craig, who has now got the gap down to three seconds. He's definitely going to catch them by the end. He's flying. Absolutely fine, Craig. I don't think this battle for fifth place is over between these two. Eagle's made a lot of effort to get into fifth place is that going to wreck his tyres back remember he's on soft tyres and Joran's on medium John does not have to worry about any tyre wear the Hades are Craig lineup's now 2.7 there's everything oh Joran Joran oh brakes where were they Whew, that was that was close so that's given Desert Eagle a slight breather as they go up through the castle section, there's the Mercedes of Craig lying back up. If I think if Craig can snatch back fifth place in these dying last few laps, <clears throat> I think he'd be rel relatively happy with this result. Not the best by any means. He won't be happy of how it was achieved, but fifth would still be good. But can he catch him back up and pass? The uh, great Murray Walker actually said they famous line which I like catching is one thing passing is another and uh, Craig is doing the catching part very very well they can see you see him but overtaking is going to be a lot more tricky uh, uh, Eagle was got broken that second gap that mistake from Joram He's definitely cut it back to over a second now as you can see Craig the top two up to 10 seconds now I think Ryan is solid with his second place. Still consistency, but HLG's championship lead is going to extend ahead of Eagle. Is Ryan going to overtake Eagle? I think them two will be closer. John, once again, late on the brakes. Now Craig is right behind him. I pressed the wrong button. <coughs> I pressed the wrong button and went up and sent down. And Craig is now within striking distance. You can see the much better grip that he has but he's got to be patient he's got three laps he can see fifth place there always oh, join is making mistakes struggling here now and Craig is just gonna be careful 
through the castle section. Again, John is a little bit ragged now. <clears throat> Eagles just jumping ahead, fifth place, so John's jumping back. Not the best, and Craig's obviously seen that, he's had to back out of it. He can jump forward, the lobby is... Eh. He is not brilliant. I mean, it's a general lag, it's not, not one particular person, it's everyone, but as you can see there, but Craig, not going to let that phase and trying to go around the right hand side. Oh, so close to the wall. Jorin! Oh! Yep, oh, he is there. And I think Jorin's just going to let through. He is, but that straight line speed of the Mercedes is so much faster from Craig, so much more low aero. Jor Jorin must be running a high aero, or high ish. So that straight line speed is just being costed in places all day. So, two laps to go. Can Craig catch Desert Eagle for fifth place? That'll be the question. We're back up to the front as we've got two laps to go. There you can see HLG just, just it's comfortable. Really, really comfortable. No problems whatsoever at all. In the lead by 11 seconds now ahead of Skyline. This is going to extend his championship lead, as I said, going into Austria. Definitely looks very good in this early part of the season. Skyline in second, obviously, he had the DNF in Canada. Still, I think he'll be happy with 18 points. Recent solid run between the two. Patronus, again, of course, Patronus had only one point from his debut in Canada. This is going to be better. It's going to be his first podium in 88, if, obviously, he keeps it. Because... You've got the uh, remainder of the two laps to go, and anything can happen. You can just one lap of concentration, and it's gone. Match my mind slightly, but there, but there is a sleep seal. I think a sleep seal. If he finishes where he is, drive of the day for me, because no points going into this. I mean, Desert Eagle is a good shout in fifth place, or he's probably hanging on to fifth out of Craig. But Craig is going to be there with him. He'll have no points going into this race, and he's on health. That's. Pretty much the reason I, I kind of expected Eagle maybe to come through the field with the pace that I know he has. But Craig is now, can see Eagle right in front of him, a lap and a half to try and get past Eagle. Now, yellow flags is set to three. I don't know what that would be. The rest of the top ten, you've got Jorin in seventh behind, is just a solid points position. Mansell has had a you know, any, anybody outside these top seven has had a tough time. I mean, Craig's had damage as well and unscheduled pit stops. But Mansell is 51 seconds behind Joran, but it's on for four points. Angerfist, where, where did Angerfist go wrong? How's Angerfist so far back? He must have had, how many stops has Angerfist had? He's had three heads to the others around him. So, yeah, what could have gone wrong? Or what, um... Basically for him, ninth place. Uh, Mackie is currently on for his final point. We've got 11 still running with key legends in 11th place. Obviously, if he stays, if anybody crashes out, legends will get a point on his debut. And it's clearly he doesn't like the track at all. What's the battle? Craig, half a second behind. It's ooh, very uh, bounced over the curbs there. Nigel G is on his last lap. I will go on to him as it comes to the final corner, but Craig didn't get the best run out of that corner, so Eagle, I think, may have enough. Well, Eagle's straight line speed wasn't that best compared to John, so maybe uh, Craig has this. Craig has this, he's got a very low arrow, I know he does. And look at the straight line speed, 210 compared to Eagle's 201 without DRS, and Craig was looking. Had a look, but not there. Where's HLG? HLG is half lap round. That back on Craig, and Craig got ever so close to the back of Eagle there. Too close, in fact. He's had to gain the momentum back. He's got the DRS once again. Can this be a run to the line? Possibly. If he can, for the rest of this lap, catch up to Eagle, get within DRS and in, and in the slipstream, I think he has the straight line speed to catch him back through. Let's see of HLG. Where is he? He's a few corners away from a momentous win. It'll be back-to-back -back victories 
for HLG. Back to back pole positions. Back to back, back, to back victories for him. Oh, well, he's got to get through these two corners and then it's coasting to the line. And he does that very nicely. Yes, he does. So, back to back wins for HRG. He's already weaving. Don't don't crash it now. Don't. <laughs> you tap the. Never mind. Flag. We tap the wall. And anyway, HRG, there he goes. He gets it. Win for the Renner driver. Skyline is going to take second in the Mercedes. I thought you tapped the wall. That was a little bit of a, a little bit of a jump, I think. But Skyline takes second. Patronus was catching Ryan to the end, but gets third place. For him, a sleep seal is going to get fourth. Let's go back to the battle with Craig, and then going to the line now. Can Craig get it with the slipstream and the DRS? Is he going to get it? I think he is. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And the line. It'd be fascinating to see how close that was, but Craig nicks just like what Bottas did against Stroll in 2017. Craig got Desert Eagle on the line. Fifth place for Craig. It wasn't wasn't a uh, smooth ride to fifth, but Craig gets 10 points. Desert Eagle ends up sixth. Still a great drive from 19th on the grid. Join in seventh. Mansell is going to come home in eighth. Um, regarding that he should negotiate these final two corners and in fact he does he's going to get eighth place and commiserations to Angerfist who definitely had the pace today but def well, did not work out for him whatever three stops on the way ninth place for him he's going to round out the top ten Mackie was a lap down but gets a point for his efforts but there we go that's the race has it been wasn't that too exciting, wasn't over exciting, but it had its moments. Had the overtake from a sleep seal, had the Craig with the drag to the line. Uh, just just like the real life 2017 race. Great stuff, but back to back victories, two in a row for HLG in Zareno. We'll extend his championship lead. Um, his championship rivals are not completely out of it, but it's the breathing space, a little bit of a gap going to Austria and of course you've got Ryan comes back from his DNF in Canada and of course you've got Patronus with his first podium of ATA so stories on every step of the podium there and there we go not many penalties although 10 seconds for Mansell so not many penalties there but uh, a sleep seal fourth place for him my driver of the day I believe goes to him uh, in fourth place, 12 points kicks off his campaign. Uh, Craig Senna in fifth place, it's 10 points. It's still a solid, decent drive. Rough getting there, but still got it. Desert Eagle from 19th on the grid to sixth, and then Joanne Mansell, Bossman, and Mackey round out the top 10. So we're going to get the front three into the into the party there let's speak through their words and see what they can react or see how they feel after that race it was an interesting one yeah Patronus Hello stream, how you doing? Yes you do. Good race, Skyline. Jesus. Wow, I was like, I'm not joining you in a co-stream, Brian. I, like, I pressed the back no offense, then, I just but said I'm not. That. <laughs> oh. I was like, right? The only reason why you caught me at the end was because um my dog for one distracted me and then I burnt up my rear tyres. So, oh, mate, uh, my, my you should have been in the lobby. The last 10 laps of the race, I had to listen to Angerfist moaning about lag. Mm. There was a, I've got Constantly. a few clips of lag. That's, yeah, uh, it, it was pretty that lagging. Was, that, was people, that was people joining, was people joining and leaving, leaving, joining, leaving, yeah. Con I'm going to yeah, people, if people lag out of the lobby, they're not allowed to rejoin anymore because it's I mean, ridiculous. You can, you can join once, 
but I think I've Once or twice. about ten times. Can I yeah. get to the questions? No! <laughs> no, we're having a lag chat. We're, 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 we're having a driver's chat. We have a lag chat afterwards. <laughs> I don't give a damn about okay, lag because it happens. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Take, take, take away the floor. Right, I can end this argument by saying lag happens. This is the state the game is in. Just deal with it, all right? Stop talking about lag. Get on with the interview. Ah. No, I don't mind about Shut the lag. door. It is what it is. Uh, but hey, there we go. These three have sprayed the champagne and have and enjoyed doing it. But now I get to ask the questions. And as I as I said, as I saw the um, animation, every step of the podium has a little separate story. So. We can start off with the first story in the first step of the podium, which is its Patronus in third place. And the story for you is, in fact, you made your debut in Canada oh, last Canada. time out. Got a point. Got yeah. a point, which was a good start. You've got to start somewhere. But yeah, this is where you... The... This is where it properly uh, starts off, because it's your first podium in ATA in this league in your second race uh so you must be very very happy good solid pace not um was it like not true? as good as the top two not as good as the top two but still decent podium there and you have battles as well so gotta be happy with that uh, i didn't really have battles it was more first second lap battles really after that it kind of like i gotta apologize to skyline um at turn three i did hit him from behind a little bit, which yeah. broke the uh, front row. It didn't damage me. Yeah, so I do apologise about that. I missed my braking because me and Craig were side by side. Craig left me enough space, but I just got a bit flustered. But to be quite honest, I mean, it was a good race, so good points. But I mean, I would I wanted more fights. I had um, Anger Fist behind me, and then he dropped back with damage. And then I was catching Craig, and then he went in for something. I don't know what he went in for. Maybe it was new tyres. And then it was damage. kind of like, was it damage? And then it was just constant mm -hmm. holding still with Skyline. You know, I was constant 6.5 behind him, and then it went to 5.9, and then 4.4, and then 3.9, and then it kind of stayed there. And that's, that was my race, really. But it was a good race. I enjoyed it. I really enjoying the the three steps in qualifying, the full qualifying. So, I'm happy in yeah. ATA. Well, that's great to hear. It's great to hear. Um, hope your stay is very much, very much long. So, uh, well done on your first podium for I ain't going anywhere. ATA. And, yeah, good points for Ferrari as well. So, uh, Krog will be happy with that, certainly. Wherever he is, probably in Barcelona at the moment. Yes, that's Petronas in third place. We move on to second place, IGD Skyline. So your story is your comeback from the DNF in Canada. Obviously, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time in that race. But in this race, you were challenging uh, HLG at one point. I noticed the gap came within a second. And I was like, battle! Battle for the lead! And then it wasn't because it, you know, the gap back opened back up again. But still... 18 points is definitely a return or good return to the podium for yourself after a couple of disappointing races so you've got to be reasonably pleased with that yeah i'm really happy with that um really happy to, to uh leave mercedes with on a high so yeah wow. a nice second place to leave mercedes on and uh look forward to joining hlg in the renault next week so oh wow. look forward that's to that. interesting and with um, so, with Gemin taking over the lead of uh, Mercedes, it's been left in good hands. So uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing how Mercedes goes, and looking forward to the future of Renault. You literally just dropped on dropped that on me like a bombshell. I didn't <laughs> yep. even mention transfer window. Yards. Yeah. Put it this well, way, Michael. Before the transfer race even started, I think it was about three o'clock. Um, I was talking to Gemin about it, and he was fine with it. And then. Um, we took well, Martin talked to Joe and a couple of hours before the race, and was like, Right, after this race is done, we'll make the move. Well, well, there you go. In ATA, we have a transfer window which um, opens in after Baku and closes in Belgium, which people can make uh, transfers to different teams. So, Pete, you'll see drivers in different colors. But 
I forgot to mention that. I should have done. I apologise. But there goes Ryan. He's already made a move to Renault. I did advise you. That's that's one yes. question. Mm -hmm. Skyline, why would you leave Mercedes as, as a team boss? Just out, just out yeah. of curiosity. You're leading the well, constructors. What are you doing, yeah, man? Well, there's two just... reasons to it. One, I wanted to have uh, someone else have a chance at being a team owner for a start. Okay. And then secondly, yeah. I, this whole conversation earlier where we were having a bit of banter about the whole Lewis Hamilton, Nico Rosberg battle check for the championships kind of thing. I'm hoping me and HRG can have something a bit like that and uh, have an inter-team rivalry because I find them always quite fun. Oh, well, yeah, HRG is a runner, isn't it? I uh, don't I necessarily is. think it will work like that because... That's like, that's like it... bloody Hamilton going to Force India or something. It just doesn't make any I mean, sense. The thing is, if you look at it this <laughs> yeah. way from my point of view, right, all I said as a team owner from Mercedes was I wanted championships, right? I think... We're going to get me, one. Me, myself or HLG can get the drivers. Right, so that's oh, chap one yeah. championship for Renault. Two, well, Renault's not that far behind in the um, GP2 constructors, so we can try and close the gap upon that. Three, combined constructors, I think Renault are, are already leading that. Mm -hmm. And four, I think um, the uh, F1 drivers are more solid, so. Yeah, I think okay. it's... Benefit. Fair enough. You have your reasons. Okay. Fair enough. It still surprises me. I still have my reservations about it because you two at the front could come in contact with each other because you're both equal pace on average over a season. So me clash of pit stops or I'm pitting first or I'm pitting first. Handbags will be Need thrown out. Right away. Meh. We'll Make see how that works. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. We'll see how Sorry, Craig. Goes. But there you go. There you go. Bombcell dropped. I hope Craig is happy. I don't think he will be. He's going to rage at you afterwards. He if tried you're begging unhappy. me to stay. <laughs> uh, I admit that Liverpool's a better team than Arsenal. Maybe he should have said that. But, oh well. He's gone. Okay. He's going to Renault. Renault's going to be boring at the front. So there we go. Uh, I hope Next all week, Renault 1 2. I hope it all fails for you. Maybe you crash into the first corner and take each other out. Anyway, moving into... I don't mean that. I'm neutral, okay? Neutral. Anyway, oh, moving on. Well done, Ryan. On your second place for Mercedes. You leave them kind of harshly, but meh, my opinion. Okay, moving on. HLG. So, the story for you... Yeah, I have a point with this, of saying that there was a story oh, we're in the preview. Oh, we're doing talks still, are we? Oh, I forgot about that. Yes, we still are. <laughs> we're still on this thing, which I like doing. So, <laughs> don't take it away from me. <laughs> it's the only thing I have. Anyway. Sorry. I should not know. Right, we're going, to, we're going to HLG, and the story for you is back-to-back -back pole positions, just. Back-to-back -back wins. Not back-to-back -back driver of the days, because it's somebody else this time. Ha. Huh? Um, but yes, you extend your championship lead to Desert Eagle and to Ryan itself, your future teammate. But it looked relatively comfortable, apart from that one time where it got to under a second, and I was like, battle, but maybe not. But still, it seemed that you were in control throughout the whole race, or was that how it felt for you? Well... I was saying during that, towards the end of that race, that it was kind of another calendar, a can, eh, Canada, where I kind Canada. of just controlled the pace. Um, the reason that gap dropped to a second was because people were leaving and joining. Um, I got the audio glitch where my game chat, my game volume, like sound and party kind of glitched together. So I had to disconnect my controller and reconnect it to fix that. So that's why that dropped, mm -hmm. that gap dropped. And then after that, I, yeah, I pretty much just kind of controlled it. There were a couple scary moments like just before i appeared where i, I kind of hit a wall that was scary but yeah other than that it was a uh, simple is the word i'm going to use a simple race i oh. hope it's not simple all the time i hope you get challenged but yes um 
obviously, we've left. Well, Pajanus has left by. Obviously, you know, side of the podium, so he just walked away, I guess. Never seen anybody do that, but anyway, carry on. Uh, so, obviously, I'm very happy with the win here in Baku. So, moving on to the next race of the championship, which is Austria. Where do you see yourself in that? Is that a good track for you? It's going to be close. Uh, that's one of those tracks where I'm going to say I'm average. I wouldn't say I'm good. So I'm expecting points, but maybe not a podium. Podium, so we'll see. But uh, definitely will be close, as I've said. But yeah, that is the race around Baku. It was... Yeah, it was dramatic. It, that mon shenanigans as always, it seems, with this game lately. Um, ball fest. But uh huh. I, no, it wasn't a ball fest. There, there was overtake. There was battles. It wasn't. You know, I can said you know the start of this stream about the 2017 race in real life, the best race in a decade, in my opinion. Um, it didn't quite match that. Probably far from that, but still, it was a good race, and. We had a story in all steps of the podium, so it's great. Uh, my driver of the day, by the way, goes to a sleep seal in fourth place. Uh, yeah, with his that. drive. Yeah, with his drive. Obviously, he gets his first points of the season, which is kind of the main reason. Desert Eagle was very close, uh, up to sixth from 19th. So, a very good drive in, this, in itself, but sleep seal, drive of the day for that. So, the next race. The next race is here, Austria. As I said, it's going to be very, very well, close in the qualifying. Shut up. Well, it's going to be <laughs> a close. That sounded harsh, but I'm sorry. Need to stop banging on about a Renault one too. Because as Martin said, you know he wants points, not a podium. Well, he thinks he's going to get points, not a podium. So he's not confident. So, meh. Anyway, get one too, fine. this this is going to be the track for this week and I am very much the person the Austria indeed uh, very short tracks of the times are going to be ridiculously close so be prepared for that the F1 race as always will be on Thursday at 7 o'clock GP2 will be at 7 o'clock next week sorry for the delay in the stream guys I had a few problems with Twitch it logged me out it doesn't normally so slight delay so apologies should be sorted now so that's that so join us on Thursday night for the F1 race at 7 o'clock. GP2 once again will be back in Austria the day later on Friday at 7pm. Will many more people be in new colours like Brian? As he said, he's offering a Renault 1 2. Will it, will it happen? So join us next time. And now until then, goodbyes.